Hey guys, this is AC Surface Tech, and today what we're going over is when you're pumping an outdoor unit down, regardless of whether that's an air conditioner or heat pump, should you pump the unit down by pressing on the contactor like this, or should you go to the indoor thermostat and just turn the air conditioner on? Now, I know this sounds funny, but there's a lot of people that are going around and pressing in contactors, and it's a big deal, okay? Uh, what I would say to do is... I would not be pressing in the contactor with a screwdriver, uh, number one, for safety reasons, and number two, it can actually be done a little bit better uh, with the thermostat on. So what I usually do is I'll take the outdoor disconnect, I will turn it off by pulling the outdoor disconnect, or you can shut it off with if you have a lever uh, disconnect switch. Then you go into the indoor thermostat, you turn the temperature down real low in cooling, which is then going to turn the fan on. All right, on the indoor unit. And that's going to help you during the recovery process because that's going to help any remaining refrigerant that's in the evaporator coil. It's going to help it to absorb heat and raise in pressure. And you want it to raise in pressure in order to be able to pump it all into the outdoor unit. So that helps you actually pump down the unit uh, better. It helps you get more refrigerant into the outdoor unit faster. And you just notify the customer and just make sure that they don't adjust the thermostat, so you just go ahead and give them the warning. Just let them know you're turning the air conditioner on and you're setting it down in temperature low just to make sure that the air conditioner kicks on and that the unit will be shutting off shortly after you're done. So once you're outside, you go ahead and you take your valve caps off. You're going to have to unscrew them and you take them off. You're going to first have to open it up with an adjustable wrench which you hold it right here with an adjustable wrench and then you, you turn it counterclockwise. Typically, you're going to take off the the caps. Then what you're going to do is you can get your service wrench ready to go and you want to use a service wrench that has an allen key that looks like this. If you can see that, you want a full length uh, service wrench. This will fit uh, all air conditioners for residential light commercial. Some of them only come out like that far uh, so you want to make sure that it's a deep uh, part right here for the beginning and this is for the liquid and that's for the vapor. So you get that ready, make sure you have it set, it'll ratchet in two different directions, like this, or like this, and you're going to want clockwise in order to close the valve down. So, now that you have this ready to go, these valves are all the way up, and that means that you have full refrigerant flow going through. We're going to turn the unit on by taking the disconnect and putting this in, and you want to make sure that this is typically horizontal like this so, so you can see it like this and what you're gonna do is you're gonna set this in and then the last part you're gonna actually hit it in and that's because you don't want the compressor to get a false start because if you just slowly press it in what's gonna happen is you're gonna see these burn marks on your disconnect so you want to just go ahead and give it a final shove you know when you're ready to go after the unit's on, I typically let it run for maybe two minutes uh, just to let the system uh, cycle. Then what I do is I start closing down the liquid uh, valve right here. Once this is closed down all the way and the, the inside stem right here is all the way downwards, then what's going to happen is the compressor is going to be sucking the refrigerant in through the vapor line, but it's not able to press it or push it out through the liquid line. So all the refrigerant is being trapped in the outdoor condenser coil unless this is a heat pump, in which case it could be trapped inside the accumulator as well as the outdoor coil, but mainly in the outdoor coil because the accumulator is before the compressor. Once you see the pressures going down all the way to 0 PSI G or maybe down to 10 inch HG on your low side gauge, and you also see that your high side gauge is down to 0 because this is not a compound gauge, this will not go down into 10 inch HG, but once you see that those pressures are down that far, uh, then you want to be able to have this valve either on the way being shut or in the case of an outdoor condenser, all you have to do is pull the disconnect because what happens is the refrigerant is all in front of the compressor. So unless that compressor has leaking uh, compressor valves, it will not allow the refrigerant back into the suction line. But if you watch the pressure as it's going down, 
ahead and just close this just to verify. You can go ahead and close this so that this is closed completely once you get down to say 0 or 10 inch HG. Just remember that the, the further you close this down, the harder the compressor is going to have to work. So you really want to have this open until it's down at maybe uh, 5 or 10 PSIG and then you can start shutting it clockwise and taking that stem down all the way to the bottom. And that will close off this valve. So remember this valve is closed off and now that one's closed off. And then you just take the disconnect and you turn the outdoor unit off. The indoor fan is still going to run until you go inside and turn the thermostat off. But this is the way that I would recommend doing it for an air conditioner or a heat pump especially in the case of a heat pump. Because for most manufacturers, if you just press this down, what's going to happen is you're actually in heat mode instead of cooling mode. So that's a little different. As you're going to have high pressure, high temperature gas heading in this direction, and then you're going to have high pressure, high temperature liquid heading in this direction. So you want to have the unit in cooling while pumping it down so it's a lot easier to just turn it off at the thermostat than it is to put 24 volts on the reversing valve and also press down on this, let alone the safety aspect of that. I, I really would not recommend doing that at all. It just makes a whole lot more sense to just turn it on at the thermostat and allow the 24 volts that's coming over to this contactor to suck down the contacts. So you don't have to be anywhere near the amperage being drawn. I would not at all recommend you going near that when a unit turns on or uh, while it's running. So let the thermostat turn on the reversing valve, let the thermostat turn on the contactor and allow the indoor blower motor to run in order to increase the pressure on the vapor side while the compressor is trying to pump the unit down. This way it's, it's making sure that you're getting all of the refrigerant and that you don't get down to say zero or five inch HG and then you shut the unit off and then all of a sudden you see the pressure rising quite a bit. That's because there is still refrigerant left in indoor coil but you thought that you had it all. So that's what I would recommend just for liability sake, just for ease. Uh, I, I would highly recommend just using the thermostat along with the outdoor disconnect. Just so you know I included the tools used in this video down in the description below like the service wrench with Allen key, the brute four port uh, manifold gauge set and the refrigerant hoses. If you want to help support the AC Service Tech channel and the making of these HVAC training videos, head on over to patreon.com slash AC Service Tech where we're making other videos and posts as well as answering questions in order to reward the members there. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.